Hello, I'm Peter Harrigan Cole. Welcome to ELPC Cooks International. The Board of Deacons was unable to host our international luncheon this year due to COVID-19 restrictions. Instead, we are presenting a video titled ELPC Cooks International at a virtual coffee hour featuring recipes prepared by ELPC members just in time for Thanksgiving. And I'm Linda Sanders. I'm also on the Board of Deacons. And um, we have a wonderful presentation in this YouTube. We're excited. And uh, I wanted to let you know that we will um, have at the virtual coffee hour, we will have some copies of the International Recipe Book for you to take home if you wish. Uh, and for those of you who are not here or are, were unable to attend any of this, you will be able to get a, um, access to the recipe book as well as access to the YouTube on our ELPC website. Uh, and I also want to uh, thank some people uh, on the staff who have been really helpful to us. Sarah Hackett uh, um, did some editing for the YouTube, for the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, videos. And um, Megan put together this wonderful recipe book, which is excellent, and put a lot of time in, and also Pastor Patrice. So they've kind of been our guides. And I do want to thank all of you for coming today and for uh, participating in this project. And uh, I hope you really enjoy it and we'll get into that recipe book and try some of them. Grape leaves al pesto. I learned how to make grape leaves from a former teacher of mine who was Lebanese. He used to make them the classical way with lamb and rice. He taught me how to make them from scratch with leaves cut from grapevines in the early summer and parboiled with lemons. For convenience sake, I now use bottled leaves because I'm pretty much a vegetarian. I don't use lamb. I make them with rice and pesto sauce and some other ingredients. However, because on this day I didn't have pesto sauce already pre-made, I just mixed all the ingredients directly. So here goes. Start by measuring out a cup of minute brown rice. Boil it and set it aside. Chop up a mix of fresh parsley and basil. You'll need about a cup and a half and put the mix in a bowl. Mix the rice in with the basil and parsley. Take a generous handful of walnuts and put them in a bowl and mash them with a spoon into small bits. Add them into the bowl and mix together. Add two generous teaspoons of chopped garlic and mix together. Add three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese and mix together. Add three tablespoons of olive oil and mix together. And then add a teaspoon of salt. Then add four generous teaspoons of minced black olives. Mix it all up and now you're ready to start rolling. As I said, I now use bottled leaves. Place a leaf stem side up on a plate. Spoon out a cigar-like shape of your basil parsley rice mix onto the leaf at the stem end of the leaf. Then gently begin rolling the leaf around the basil parsley rice mix. Use your thumbs and first fingers. After completing one rotation, begin tucking in the sides as you continue to roll until the grape leaf completely surrounds the basil parsley rice mix. Start setting them out on a tray to serve. Set out with wedges of lemon, as some people like to squeeze fresh lemon on the leaves before they eat them. Then enjoy. Good evening, uh, I'm Linda Sanders. As you can see, I'm Aunt Linda, but um, I have my Peruvian uh, apron on because my nephew's uh, wife, uh, Carolina, is uh, from Peru. So we have even, you know, international um, aprons this evening. So I'm uh, going to uh, prepare 
a mealy bread, and mealy bread is simply cornbread. It's the uh, South African word for um, maize or, or corn, and their corn is a little bit different than ours, but anyway, I make, I'm making this bread because um, as a child uh, and a teenager, I uh, had the privilege of meeting many mission, Presbyterian mission, missionaries from uh, who were serving in African countries, and I became really interested in the culture and uh, fascinated with the country. Uh, and then I had the privilege of um, traveling to Rwanda uh, and spending several weeks there and also uh, Kenya. So I'm bringing this to you. This bread is similar to Southern cornbread, but it's, it is different in that it uses actual corn and um, there are kernels of corn in the bread. And um, original, there's some areas of, um, this is South African, but there's some areas that do the cornbread, but the mealy bread, but um, what they do is they uh, will steam it. So they, you know, have a pot of water and maybe a tin can, and then they'll set the, the pan on top of the tin can and then cover it and let it steam. And it's, it's more like a pudding, it's spooned. So um, I'm gonna just make one that is baked. Um, and actually I did bake it and it didn't come out as great as I had hoped, but that happens to all of us. It still tastes good. So um, this bread is very dense and it's rather chewy, but it will um, also be, it's very good with uh, barbecued foods and uh, fried chicken and uh, um, so I think it's, it, and it's a very, it doesn't taste like Jiffy Mix. It isn't that sweet and it's not that fine. It, it's, as I said, it's a dense bread. So <clears throat> let's get started. I'm gonna not make the whole thing, but I'm gonna show you uh, the ingredients. The ingredients are not that um, specific, I mean, not that difficult to uh, find in this recipe, but, um, and it is not a, a difficult, it's like making a sweet bread. Um, so uh, first I'm gonna start with the liquids. So over here we have um, uh, two tablespoons of melted butter and uh, two eggs, which you beat lightly. Uh, I have not beaten them. Uh, but, um, and then you take a half a cup of milk and you put that in, I have a bullet, I don't have a fancy machine. So anyway, and then you take half, uh, you use two uh, cups of corn, and I like to use fresh corn, and that's really what you should use. Um, you cook it and, or steam it, and then cut it off the cob. And I didn't quite have enough, so I used some cooked uh, frozen corn. So you take half of that and put it in with the milk, and um, then you uh, puree it so that it's very liquidy. And then the remainder you put in with the liquid uh, combination and you, you just do it very, just like one turn well, on the bullet, but you just, uh, so that the corn is intact. Um, so half of it is pureed and half of it is intact. So, um, and then you <clears throat> take that and your eggs and your butter and put it in a bowl and mix it up with a, a fork if you if you wish and then or a spoon uh, and combine it and then the dry ingredients um, you use a one and a half cups of um, unbleached flour I'll actually do this I feel like I should do something here instructive <laughs> and um, okay, there we go and then um, in this little dish I have the remainder of the ingredients, and they are, I want to get these uh, proportions correct, two tablespoons of cornmeal, two tablespoons of sugar, uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of paprika. So you add that, obviously, to the uh, other dry ingredients. Mix that up. So 
So that's ready for tomorrow, like this tomorrow, maybe. Um, I usually um, do use the sifter when it works uh, because I think it, it kind of it blends better. And uh, sometimes I use a whisker as well to go through there. So uh, then you combine, as we do in uh, almost all baking, we combine the, the, the liquid with the dry ingredients and mix those together thoroughly. And uh, I do it by hand because um, I just like the, the way the texture comes out. And um, of course, previously to this, um, you have turned your oven on to 350 degrees and I butter and just flour lightly a, um, a pan about this size. I think it's eight and a half by four and a half or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's eight. Yeah, that, that was correct actually, eight and a half by four and a half. So um, you put it in there and um, in a 350 oven and you bake it for around 40 to 45 minutes. Now it's deceiving because it's brown, it gets brown before it's really cooked. This is, as I said, it's a very dense bread. Uh, so you have to watch uh, that you don't take it out too soon or you will have something similar to a spoon bread. So um, I can't ask if you have any questions. <laughs> this recipe is going to be in the um, recipe book. Uh, and there's some really nice recipes in there. And you know, um, I, I really enjoy, like when I entertain or even if, just for myself, I like to try an international dish. Um, and maybe add, something like this can be added to something that is our tradition. Um, and it, of course, you know, uh, cornbread is very popular uh, at Thanksgiving. So this might be a, a nice addition. And again, it doesn't, it's, it's a, different, a different taste, uh, but it's lovely. And it's best when it's uh, served warm with lots of butter. So um, I hope that you'll um, try it. I'm gonna cut it and show you a piece. So here it is. It's um, it's a very dense bread, and um, maybe this end piece would be a little bit better. Yeah, and as you can see, even this this is why I wasn't particularly happy with this. Um, it didn't completely cook clear through, and that just happens every once in a while. I don't know whether it's my oven or what, but anyway, there it is, and you can try it and see how it comes out for you. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Luca Lesher. And I'm Megan Lesher. And we'll, we'll be, be making a chocolate raspberry layer cake with dark chocolate ganache. It's a super simple recipe and very tasty, so hope you enjoy. Here's what you'll need to grab. You'll need some sugar, you'll need some flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda, salt, two eggs, some milk, vegetable oil, vanilla, one cup of boiling water, and some raspberry jam. For the ganache, you'll need a bag of dark chocolate chips and some heavy cream. So grab all those things and let's get ready to make it. Okay, so first you're gonna Measure out all your dry ingredients and mix them together with whisk until well combined. Okay, so now we're going to mix it together until well combined with our whisk. Then we'll make a well in it for the wet ingredients. Make sure to get out any clumps of sugar or anything that you have. Here's what mine looks like right now. Yours should look similar. So I'm just gonna start whisking that up. And again, make sure to get out any clumps of sugar or anything. All right, now make a well. 
down the middle and I'm gonna pour in the wet ingredients. important part. After working with eggs, you always want to wash your hands. Just Be careful when you're squeezing out the vanilla because it comes up fast in some cases. This is rubber spatula. We're going to go, okay, so right now it should look like that. and mix that up just until, combined, want just until combined because of baking you never want to over mix anything it can make or break a dessert you should start getting this rich dark chocolatey color it's going right, to get a lot last, darker last step is adding in the boiling water and here's what this looks like right now. See, it's got that dark color and it's starting to thicken up a little bit. Okay, now that it, that's all mixed up, we are gonna add our boiling water. And what we're doing right now, this is to make the ganache? No, it's not for no, this. No, this is, for is the, the batter. batter. So it's going to be super runny, um, but that's okay. As you can see right now. Yeah, it is very runny. Okay. Extremely runny. You may think there's something wrong with it, but most likely there isn't. Okay, does this look even between the two? Um, yep. Maybe a smidge more on this one. Yeah, make sure to spread it out even. Cause we, what we're doing is we're gonna bake both of these then we'll stack them on top with a layer of ganache in the middle and then the frosting and stuff on the top. And of course, the rice will be. And the jam in the middle. Yes, there's also jam in the middle. All right. We're gonna put these in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes. Now would be a good time to clean up any messes so you're not left with a big mess at the end. So here's what this looks like. You want the chocolate to get nice and runny and melted. So just, you'll just keep stirring that until it gets, as you can see, we have the pot and then the bowl on top of that. And then we're gonna add in our cream later. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, I stirred it up, plop some right on there, and start spreading it out nice and even. This really helps even out the cake and make it a little lighter while still giving it that rich flavor. Okay, now that it is all done, we're gonna put the second cake on top. Nice. All right, now the ganache is just about ready. The chocolate's melted and we're gonna add the cream. Okay, so now the chocolate is ready. The chocolate is all melted. And we're gonna add our cream in. Okay. So we've mixed in the cream. Now it's all smooth like that, smooth and creamy. So that is the chocolate that we melted in the cream. So that's all done. Okay, we let that chocolate cool down 
You want to make sure it's cool. You can see we're pouring it on. Making sure it gets all on there. And we do not have as much because we did not have a full bag of chocolate chips. But um, yours, it will be a lot more because you're using a full bag of chocolate chips. But if you don't have a full bag, then it will work too. And you just let it drizzle over the side. However, a full bag is ideal. Okay. 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 So now you can add some fresh berries. We're using frozen ones, but um, you can add whatever ones you like. We're going to be using raspberries and blackberries. This, yours should look similar to ours in the end, but of course, when you're baking, things can be different if you um, substitute things or if you don't have as much of something for using fresh or frozen, but it'll all make a different cake. Um, we hope you enjoy this cake, and we had fun making it, and this is a very very good cake. And it only uses one bowl to make, which I love. Easy cleanup. Yes. Bye! All right, I'm Deacon Dave, and I'm here with family members behind the camera, Liam and my wife, Alyssa. And today we're going to be going over how to cook our traditional Thanksgiving sweet potato souffle should be pretty easy. We sort of put everything together ahead of time. Um, and even in the, you'll see in the recipe that we provided, you can do things in st stages. You can actually refrigerate the first part overnight or actually all of it overnight and bake it the next day. Um, or you can put it all together for your meal. So without further ado, uh, I already have cut potatoes into cubes less than an inch. I think are we going over this way? Can you see? I'm not going to tilt this and scald myself um, and they have been cooking for about 20 minutes at a boil and they are you'll have to trust me but they're kind of soft and mushy and so the first thing we're going to do without burning ourselves is to strain our sweet potatoes and maybe you can answer a sweet potato or ham has it ever made a difference either one's fantastic there you go the age-old question and i have no idea what the difference is all right, so now that these are pretty drained, we're gonna transfer them to our mixing bowl. And then we already have kind of one set of ingredients. So you can see our eggs, evaporated milk, butter, which I'll pour in there, and then sugar, pumpkin spice, I believe, and vanilla and lemon juice. So that's already in there. And pour that in. And then hopefully the kitchen gnomes will come by and clean up when we're done. Isn't that right, cameraman? Mm -hmm. He's laughing and agreeing on behind the scenes. This is not cracking. Ah, hold on, I got it. Don't laugh, don't laugh. You're the one that's eating it with all the eggshells. <laughs> all right, there, that was a little more successful. There we go. And then, last one. Man. Guess it's a good thing I have a different day job, huh? <laughs> all right, so now we're going to move this over to our little mixer. And you can see the yummy mix here. No technical difficulties so far. So we mix this up. Ooh, look at that. I'm gonna grab a little spatula while we watch this super exciting mixing moment. This mixing moment brought to you by a kitchen aid. I'm speed it up a little bit. Make sure you have your protective glasses on. Alright. It's 
since Alyssa usually, uh oh, wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Behind the scenes, where she's saying it's mixed sufficiently. All right. So now we already have a pre greased 9 by 13 here. So we'll pour this in. You can just ignore the little pats of butter that didn't melt. They'll eventually melt. All right, and I'm not sure if my cameraman's gonna switch back or not, but we have a little mix of topping. And just to make another dish dirty. So we've got a cup of pecans, brown sugar, and pre-melted butter. We'll mix that in. This is honestly the best part right here. And make sure that's all mixed up. Boy, Rachel Ray sure makes this look smooth, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, like I said, you can even, you can store this overnight and then bring it out uh, before your meal. Or you can uh, make it the day of, and then you can either add this before you put it in the oven or after. And today we'll do it before. I'm trying, it's a little tricky with that camera and try and get the scrumptious little caramelized sugar here. And try and get an even distribution so that I've got all kinds of electronic sounds in the background. All right. And here you have it. Your sweet potato souffle. Ready to go. Take a little tour of the kitchen here. And then we'll set that for about 35 minutes. All right, hope you guys enjoy. Bon appetit. Ciao, I'm Dee Dee Fry and I'm going to demonstrate how to make a simple tomato sauce. It's Marcella Hazan's recipe, and it's delicious. You start with two pounds of plum tomatoes. I use the Cento brand because I found that to be the closest to a good Italian canned tomato. Um, you can also use fresh if, if you have that available, but again, the it's just, you need two pounds, whatever, fresh or canned. And then you add an onion that's been cut in half and five tablespoons of butter and a bit of salt to your, to your taste. And I put the heat on medium to start it. And once it comes to a simmer, you let it simmer for 45 minutes. So while it's simmering, take the, um, a wooden spoon and mash the tomatoes. And when it's finished, um, you can remove the onion and uh, have your pasta, water, hot water ready, you know, to serve it immediately. One thing I do is I take it and I put it into my food processor and I leave the onion in, which is something you could also too do that adds extra flavor. So, bon appetit.